All right, guys, so in this video, we're finally going to install the motor on the M45. I should have everything that I need to get it installed and ready to go and hopefully turn it on by the end of this video. Uh, I just need to pick up like the oil filter and the oil. I already have the coolant. I have the transmission fluid as well because I'm going to drain it. And I think we should be good. Everything else, uh, for the most part, has been cleaned up in the engine base. So everything is ready to go ahead and just be installed. Right now, there's like a few parts missing on the motor that I still need to install. But I think I'm going to do that when I put the engine in there. Just because I don't want to mess up anything while I'm putting the engine in there. And I'd rather have as much space as possible. I'm going to be putting one header on, which is the one on the passenger side. And the other one, if you guys watched the previous video, I had to remove the um, driver's side one because it kept hitting the wall. The header on this part right here would hit the steering column. So I had to take that off and then put the motor in there. The AC compressor already had taken it off, but it's really easy to install those parts. So I'm just going to do it while the motor's in there so I don't mess anything up. And then if some of you guys are asking how I'm lifting the motor, I have four locations where I have it mounted to. So I have a bracket right here. This is the top. There's another one right there. They're 12 mils. And then there was a bracket over here holding something into place. I took off the 12 mil and I put this on there. And then on that side over there, I have another one supporting it right there. So they're all 12 mils holding it on really good. Um, I've been moving this thing around, hasn't fallen or anything, I haven't had any issues. The proper location to actually lift it from is right here, on these two. And then there's two more on the other side in the front. The leveler that I have doesn't actually reach all the way to the size, that's why I couldn't use those. So I'll most likely just record bits and pieces here and there of me um, putting the motor on. I already put on new valve cover gaskets, um, the oil pan, I did go ahead and put my old one on there because the other one had cracked, if you guys saw the previous clip there's a hole right there which is repairable you know there's not, nothing really wrong with it. it just has a hole but i wanted to go ahead and test this out as soon as possible so i didn't really want to wait for that one to be finished yeah um, enough talking i'm gonna go ahead and start putting this thing on and then uh, i'll keep you guys updated and we'll go from there all right guys we got the engine in there and so far i've put on most of the accessories and then we need to install the intake manifold, but I'm installing a few things back there because it's a lot easier to access that stuff when the intake manifold is out, which is the one over there. And I just put these little paper towels in there, that way nothing gets in there. Just take it off right now. But the hardest part, honestly, was getting the transmission and the engine to like mount up properly. We actually had to take the engine out because the transmission wasn't sitting properly on there, on the engine. So when we were tightening the bolts, there was always like a gap at the top. So you need to ensure that everything is put together correctly, um, especially the torque converter, make sure it's pushed in all the way in there. I'll show you guys right now on the other transmission how to make sure that it's all the way in there when you're putting the um, engine and transmission together. But everything's looking good. Then we just gotta install the front core support along with the radiator and the condenser and the fans and everything. And then we can go ahead and test it out. I do need to refill the transmission. Um, fluid because some of it did come out from these lines right here so once we connect it um, that should be okay and we just got to refill it and then put engine oil in the engine of course i think at this point we're good to go ahead and install the manifold i think that there is just one plug back here that i have to connect but i think the connection goes to the wiring harness and i don't want to put the wiring harness over until after i put the manifold on there because it is still kind of dirty and I don't want stuff to fall inside the holes. But there is a few connections back there that I think I should be able to reach with the intake manifold just right here. So, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and put everything back on. For installing the condenser and the radiator, you can put them together just like that. And then you can slip it in. The core support has already like an indentation where it falls in along with the canister right here. And then also... It has the lines that go connected right there, so you'll have to kind of loosen them to get them out of the way. But it's going to fall inside that hole right there, lining up with the one at the bottom. I would have you go ahead and go under the car right here and ensure that the little like pipe that's sticking out goes right there. And then that means it's in. And then you just got to move it back and then it'll sit right in there just like that. And then you're going to grab these little brackets right here 
and you're gonna move it to the front and that'll support it right there and then you can tighten it down so it doesn't get out of place and then the fans are over there uh, same process except that you put it in there and then it's gonna fall in those little holes but right now I'm gonna install these transmission lines right here just like that and this one over here and then we gotta get the clamps over and then this goes to uh, the fans it's a control module all right guys so we filled up the transmission fluid power steering coolant engine oil we're gonna go ahead and start it for the first time see if it works I already connected the battery and it does lock and unlock so let's see if it turns on All right, so let me go ahead and go over a few things I wanted to mention about installing the motor and things you should watch out for. One thing for sure is gonna be the torque converter. You have to ensure that it's pushed in all the way and that it doesn't sit out. Now, when you put the torque converter in, it's gonna sit like this. So right there, you can see it is a little bit out. It's not pushed in all the way and it's even gonna move for you. It's gonna turn and everything as in a stay put but you need to ensure that it's pushing all the way past technically this groove so you're gonna go ahead and just lift it push back just like that and now it's technically like pushed in all the way now um you have to do this because if you don't push it in all the way when you install the motor it's gonna hit this portion right here and it's not gonna push in all the way back because it's hitting the gears and you're gonna end up messing it up so just be careful with that. That's one thing that you have to just watch out for when it comes to this right here, and then you should be good. But other than that, that's pretty much it when it comes to the torque converter. Once you install it, then you have these four bolts that you gotta put back in, which you can access through the bottom portion of the oil pan, and that's how you connect the flex plate to the torque converter, so it turns, of course. But yeah, um, everything mounted up perfect. I had no issues whatsoever installing this motor. Uh, this motor is for like the 06 um, M45 and up. The motors from previous years from like 05 and down are different. They have a different intake manifold which is located on the side and the um, starter is actually located on the other side as well. So there's different models that you gotta be careful for. Um, usually 06 and up have like the same exact motor. So like for this one right here, this is the intake manifold for an 06 and up, the V8. And then you have the other one, which is located on the other side over here. So that's one thing that you have to watch out for. Everything else should technically be the same when it comes to this motor. But I got really lucky that everything mounted up. I didn't have any issues at all. I thought I had an issue uh, with the transmission because I didn't push in the torque converter all the way. But once I removed the engine, pushed it in, I had no more issues there. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. A few other things I want to talk about a little bit more. Um, when it comes to installing the engine, watch the other video that I made when it came to actually removing the engine. That's going to help you out a lot on what you have to take off. I show you like everything that I removed technically in order to remove the engine. Um, we're putting the engine back in, follow the same process, just in reverse order. So you have to remove the steering column. You have to remove the header on the driver's side in order for it to fit. Um, you can leave the passenger side in there with no problems. That, that works perfectly fine. Um, when it comes to the engine mounts, just put the motor down and then use your hand to push the motor mount in because it does kind of stick out a little bit. So you just gotta push it in in order for it to sit properly and then it'll fall down on its own. Um, and then if the motor is not mounting up properly to the transmission and you're finding it really hard to torque down or to tighten up the bolts that connect the transmission and the motor, you have a problem. It should be really, really easy and it should fall in very simple. So if it's becoming tight, then you got a problem. And then if it's tight and it's not closing up, try rotating the crank. And that'll usually tell you if you're good when it comes to the clearance with the torque converter, the flex plate, and everything else that pretty much goes to turning the entire engine. So that's one thing you guys should look out for. But um, other than that, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, when it came to the fluids, um, I used that over there for the coolant. It's a funnel that allows you to burp the system properly. Um, and I used Nissan coolant um, when it came to that. 
For the transmission fluid, I used Asthmatic from Nissan as well. I used everything Nissan, like I didn't go with any off brands or anything. And then Mobile One for the fluid, and then the coolant from Nissan as well, right here, already pre diluted, which means you don't add any water to it. Transmission fluid it actually goes in here. And that dipstick. Fine, let me be completely honest, I did have a few issues uh, with the motor when it came to when I turned it on. So when I turned it on, it was really loud because it was just like the open headers. And after installing the white pipe, I was able to hear a ticking, knocking sound coming from the engine. Now, it could have been due to a few things, um, just because the motor was sitting there for a while. So the motor has been sitting there, fluids haven't been ran through the car. Uh, there could have been things that have been cogged up. I looked at a lot of information on what could have caused it because I honestly thought it was a bad motor. But after doing a little bit more research, I came to find out that it could have been a few more things that me could have caused it, like bad fuel injectors. Um, the car didn't have any fuel at all when I turned it on. I went ahead and added fuel in there, um, and it still was kind of running weird. And then I went ahead and just let the car run. I let it warm up, and then it started getting quieter over time. So I'm not sure if the oil just had to run through the system in order for the ticket to stop and or the injectors or whatever it was was clogged and it was causing it to have a bad fuel and air ratio which can also cause ticking or knocking so there's a few things that can cause knocking noises so uh, luckily enough i don't think i had any problems with the engine itself it was just certain things like that that were causing the issues because now i have been running the car for i would say it's been a week already that i've been running the car and it hasn't came back anymore let me go ahead and throw in the clip right now how it sounded with that ticking sound. So after watching that video, it kind of sounds like it does have like a knocking or ticking sound. But after I like drove it around the corner, I let the fluids run through it, it stopped. I'm not sure why it was doing that, um, cause it only did it for the first day. After I drove it around, it stopped and it hasn't done it since. And the motor is running perfect. And I'm actually gonna throw in a clip right now of how the motor sounds while I'm driving it. That way you guys can see that there's nothing wrong with it so far. But um, I do have warranty on the motor. So if something does happen, I can go ahead and return it. Um, I was about to return it when that started happening with the knocking. I was about to remove the engine and everything, but I decided to go ahead and just try it out. I mean, the motor was already in there, so I might as well just drive it to see if it fixes it, and it did go away. But let me go ahead and drop in another video right here so you guys can see me driving the car. All right, guys, so right now we're driving the M45. It's been, well, yeah, it's technically been a day already since the car was making that ticking or knocking sound, and I've been driving it for about, I would say, over 500 miles, and it hasn't made that sound anymore. But yeah, so far it's working good. Uh, no more ticking and knocking, so hopefully it goes away. I'm gonna drive the car for another week to give it some time to see if it gives me any more issues later on down the line. But for the most part, everything seems to be okay. Uh, there's a little bit of hissing. I'm not sure if you guys can really hear it. It's coming more from my dad's side over there. But that's because I have no gaskets <laughs> um, to the bottom portion of the header. I do have the gasket, of course, to the actual header to the block. But from the bottom portion of the header to like the white pipe, I don't have a gasket. I could not find them. I have no idea where I put them. Uh, but there's somewhere I might just have to order some. But I was planning on doing a custom exhaust. So I didn't really want to order new gaskets if I'm not going to reuse them. Or maybe I will because I'm, I'm not going to change the header um, portion where it connects. So I, I think I'll just order the, um, the gaskets for the white pipe to the header. And that'll fix that hissing sound. So... Um, other than that, everything seems to be okay. Um, luckily, I haven't got a check engine light for some reason. Um, I know previously I would run the car for like about 500 miles and the engine light would turn on for my having cast to the header. So it hasn't turned on and I'm not sure why. Maybe it'll turn on later, but it's running pretty good. Maybe there was more issues with the other engine that I didn't know of. And but now we're putting, putting this one in there. Everything is like brand new. Everything should be good. But I'm trying to do a pull, but there's a lot of cars around here and I can't really do a pull but usually the car would make noise at a stop when it was just idling or sitting there you would hear like the knocking but like now when I come to a stop it's completely quiet it sounds really good too like it sounds healthy 
So I'm really happy that it got fixed on its own because I was honestly like devastated because I put so much work into replacing a bunch of things. And then to turn out that this engine has knock, which I was kind of skeptical about it because like how could this brand new engine have knock? Like you guys saw the internal components, everything looks so good. And now it's at a point where it's like knocking. Like I even removed the oil pan, everything looked intact. Nothing was like moving or anything. Everything looked perfectly fine. So like I was just tripping out on why, why was it knocking and I just put it in, so. Once a week passes and everything is good, uh, with the engine there's no more knocking and there's nothing wrong with it i do actually want to add a few more things to kind of prevent um, any issues from rising in the future i want to add an oil cooler and i also want to add a catch can now the catch can is just going to prevent oil from getting into like the intake manifold the intake system the oil cooler is really going to help with keeping the um, engine temps down when it comes to the oil and that's really going to help out a lot i know with the VK45DE, when I drive it, I feel like a lot of heat on the inside of the car without having like the AC or the heater on and there's just like a lot of heat. And with the 370Z, it actually has that same problem with the um, older years, which is like the 09. They don't have an oil cooler, so it would get really hot. And once I added the oil cooler on my 370Z, it stopped with that heat issue and I didn't feel it anymore. So. I'm hoping that happens with the VK45 as well, that once I add the engine oil cooler, it stops that issue. But that's going to conclude the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. That's where I mainly post uh, before I even post on YouTube because it takes a lot of work to be able to put all my videos together and things like that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.